Rebecca Direct. I'm here today and I'm so happy to be with you. We get, have fall in the air. It's in the 50s this morning and so it was nice and cool when I was out running today and in a way that kind of beats the heat I think. It's pretty cool. So I am enjoying the fall and I'm excited about using a lot of fall colors as we start our knitting projects and continue working on with our knitting projects for our Christmas season and the cool weather. So I'm excited about that. Um, the first thing that I wanted to talk about is if you wanted to enter our contest today, I want you to post comments in the comment section. Let us know what you're talking about, post some pictures, and share with us. Tell us what you know, you're know you enjoying, or post any comments, share with your friends, and then we can learn from each other, and that's always wonderful. So um, the prize for today is a skein of this wonderful sueno and this is one of our new yarns that we have and it is a bamboo merino blend by Scassell. it's it's called by haiku but haiku is by Scassell. and this is a really nice yarn to knit with it has a very uh tight twist to the yarn and at first when i was knitting it i'm going oh boy that twist might be a little bit tight but then when I blocked out my project, which is this lovely hat right here that's called the Traveling Cables Pattern, and this is by Scassell, right, Jim? And it is a free pattern on our website, www.alpacadirect.com. And this hat was super easy. I did it in one afternoon, and it basically has just three different cable section, and everything else is just simple ribbing. And so it worked up very quickly, and if you look at it, it just is beautiful. This has been washed, and do you see how beautiful the shine from the bamboo is? Just gorgeous. And so I really like that pattern, and you can find that on alpacadirect.com. They want to know what so, the name of the pattern is? It's called Traveling Cables, okay. Beanie. And it's a free pattern on Alpaca Direct. So that was a really fun thing that I knit this week. And um, what else have I, oh, we are going to be talking about 10 things that we all might want to try our best to avoid. And oh my goodness, I think I do every single one of these 10 things. But I'm thinking about ways that I can avoid doing it or think about it differently and turn it around so that I can do, choose better habits. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Helen says so, hi from Oak Harbor, Ohio. Hi, good morning. It's so nice to have you all come. here. That's wonderful. And I am so excited about the projects that we're going to be showing today. And I would love to hear where you're from. And if you can post comments in the comment section about what you're working on, I always love to see those beautiful projects that you're all working on. It inspires me and then I get ideas about new patterns and things that I want to work on. So um, that's always exciting for me. Also, we just finished up the fair and I just went and picked up my projects yesterday that I had put into the fair. And I don't really put projects into the fair per se to, you know, um, to get receive accolades or anything like that, no. I do it because I want kids out there to realize that you can make things with your hands and inspire them to maybe learn to knit and or crochet. And so I find that wonderful to kind of motivate people and inspire people. That's what I love. And so I just got a couple things back. And also I wanted to share with you, like here, um, they have these little comment things on the back of when you get your projects back from the fair. So this is one of my uh, projects that I entered, and it's um, boot, slipper boots. It's I love wearing these in the winter time. I always make stuff that's practical that I can wear, and my feet are always cold. And so I made these slipper boots, and I entered those. But if you look, they have nice little, they have a little evaluation uh, card, and they tell you that all the different things, and if they have comments or. Um, things that maybe you can improve, they'll write them down here. So I make sure to read all these cards because it helps me improve my knitting skills and I'm all about learning and maybe trying different ideas and, and improving my skills. So that's a wonderful way to do that as well as participate in the fair because if nobody participates then soon there will be no knitting and or crochet section. And we do not want that. So we want to enter a project. 
So the first um, habit that I was talking about and I when I was writing down my list and I'm sitting here thinking, what habits should I avoid? And the first thing that I came up with was buying yarn without a project in mind. Now, if we're shopping at this store and we're on vacation, for instance, I bought one of these. And this is from McCall, Idaho. When I was up traveling there, I went to a store and I bought this. And I've never done anything with it yet. But if I had possibly maybe chosen a pattern at that store at that time, maybe this would be made into a project right now. Now it's kind of sitting in my yarn stash and it's beautiful and it's lovely. And I actually thought it kind of went nicely with this shawl that I'm doing here. And so I kind of put that next to it. But anyway, I'm not sure what this is gonna become. And then I have all these uh, little stash yarns that are just kind of sitting lonely, waiting for a project to pop up that I might enjoy knitting it with. Maybe someone so, will have an idea. Yeah, so maybe someone will have an idea for me for a pattern that I might choose for this lovely yarn so that I can actually make it into something and use it. So that's always wonderful. Also, I wanted to, the next thing I was thinking of was make sure that you're making notes when you're doing your project. Say you change a pattern, which I change every pattern. So if I don't make really clear notes about what I'm doing as I go, say I'm knitting socks, for instance, and I change the sock or I have, you know, how long it's going to be before I start turning the heel. If I don't write that down, then I'm guessing. And the chance of me making a sock that will match my other sock is probably slim to none. So I use Ravelry all the time and this is just a sock pattern that I came up with yesterday and I thought I would not start knitting these socks and not I kind of you know how I love cables cables are kind of like my thing and so I put some cables on front and I um, also another tip that I wanted to tell you is I don't know if you found this or not but when you're um, doing mittens and gloves and you have cast on maybe with the worsted weight yarn I use 18 to 20 stitches per needle so right around 36 to 40 stitches so your foot and your hand are similar to the same size so if you look at a worsted weight pattern and it has 56 stitches or something for instance then you would know that 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 pattern won't work for me because I won't be able to use that many stitches on my foot because I'm using 20 stitches on each needle for my hand and my hands and my feet are similar to the same size around so that's a good way to look when you're looking at these patterns can I knit them or do they have the size for me which I have a huge problem with because my feet are so small I wear a size 5 and um, knitting patterns uh, soft patterns a lot of them do not go down that small and so anyway I a lot of times just make up my own patterns like I did with this one but um, that oh this pattern was so cool I don't know if you guys have seen this before it's called the fish lips kiss heel and it, it is by the socks therapist and it is found on Ravelry it costs one dollar and so you can take any cable pattern that you want and then just add your own heel and then you have a sock design right so that's what I did there's this cables and Aaron book from that I have from interweave press and all I did is I looked for a cable pattern that had not too many stitches in it and what I was looking for see it's that pattern I just wanted one that has like four or six rows uh, rounds excuse me and then I could change that and knit that in the round and have it easy to do so that, or that's how I use these kind of books. I buy these books for ideas so I can make uh, like unlimited patterns. I can do all kinds of things with it. So when you guys are doing your projects out there, just think outside that box and really come up with some great ideas and you can make your own socks. And also I wanted to remind you that like for instance for me, I had never done a fish lips kiss heel and so how I learn how to do something without following patterns I mean I don't I won't even have to read this when I'm done I'll know how to do this heel and the way that I learn to do it is I do this heel three times I choose three different patterns where I'm going to use this exact heel and by the time I'm done with the third pattern 
I have it completely memorized. And so I will be able to do these. I don't know if you can see them, Jim. Can you see it? No. It's a beautiful heel and it, it's made to fit your foot perfectly. Super easy, okay? And I was doing it like 11 o'clock last night. So, and I never turn heels at night. That's one of my rules. But this was so easy to do that I didn't have a problem with it. So I turned both of my heels last night and um, was totally thrilled because guess what? I'm learning a new skill. And so that always makes me happy. So anyway, if you get a chance to try this heel, I would highly recommend it. And I was enjoying knitting with that last night. I'll have to show them to you next week when they're all done and they, I'm gonna make them long socks. I'm using my leftover yarn from this sweater that I did and it's called the Br uh, Brick it's by Claire Lee. And I, I showed it to you before in a previous uh, Facebook Live. But um, that was a pattern that I did and it called for, I don't know, six skeins or what have you. or something like that and I bought the recommended yarn and of course I only use three of them so I have extra yarn which is good because I always have cold feet like I said so perfect for me it's called the score and I like this uh, I like the green colorway my uh, ja jackets winter down jacket is kind of that color and I don't know it works for me also I wanted to give you a hint about when you're trying on working on sweaters okay so one of our project uh, things that we want to try and avoid is not making uh, when you don't make a swatch and check your gauge and you're knitting along and you find out that your sweater is not fitting you or what have you stop stop and take it apart rewind that yarn and call it practice call it a learning curve call it whatever you want but don't continue to knit the whole sweater and go I don't really like it because it will sit in the closet or you will end up giving it away and it may be yarn that you paid a lot for so I would say if you um, want to take the time to knit a sweater then go ahead and tear it out and start over don't be afraid to start over. It's fine. It's, you know, it's called a journey in life. It's all good. And what I do with mine is I knit my sweaters on a 47 inch cable. And you can either use a 47 inch cable or you can just transfer some of your stitches onto another needle. And if you're doing those top down sweaters, you know, that are in the round, then you can try it on as you go and you'll know if it's fitting you. That's why I love those sweaters so much. And people say, well, those sweaters don't have a ton of structure to them. Well, you just put in a faux seam. Maybe you put just one purl stitch like I've done here to give that side edge a little tiny bit of structure and so that your um, sweater doesn't look so, so droopy on the edge. It gives you a more defined look. So there are different ways that you can deal with that, you know, knit in the round all at once. So as we're going along, make sure to push the like button and share with others if you're having a good time. And please, if you have comments, I'd be happy to answer any comments or questions that you have because that's what I'm here for. I'm here to learn from you and to see what I can do to help you go home. Maybe you thought of a few different ideas or thought of something differently than you originally thought about. And maybe you learned something and that is wonderful for me. So I have succeeded if I have made you think differently or learn something that's wonderful. So the next thing that we're gonna be talking about is starting new projects before the old ones are finished. And I have a ton of those. Oh my goodness, I have a ton of projects that are not finished. But I do not stress. I just keep them in their bags with their pattern, with everything with it, and then I will bring them out again and work on them. And when I do bring them out, I have it exactly written what row or round I'm on and there's no problem to just let it set a little bit. My rule is if I knit and if I finish two projects a week, I am perfectly happy. I'm thrilled with that and I don't even stress about the stuff that's not done. 
However, if I do have projects that are not finished because I'm not enjoying them, rip that yarn out, turn it back into a skein, and use it for something else. I have also begun to, if for some reason I don't like the yarn, I bring it here in the shop and I donate it. I give it to people that are knitting here at the table. I just offer it to them. I'm like, maybe they will enjoy it because I'm not. And so, and they really appreciate it. So, think about that. Um, what else? Um, putting projects away without the yarn and the pattern in them. Oh my goodness. That is awful. When you have a project and it's half knit, you don't know where it came from. It's beautiful and you want to finish it and you don't know anything about it. What I would say, whenever I start a project, I really, really try on Ravelry to go ahead and take my iPad out and I take a picture of it and post it on Ravelry. And I try to transfer my notes from my patterns as clearly as I can, I'll say a US number seven, you know, what have you, whatever cast on I used, whether it's a provisional or whatever, I will identify that. And then if for some reason that actual project gets thrown into a bin without a pattern and the documentation and stuff with it, so I can look back on Ravelry and voila, it's there. So Ravelry is a great tool. It's free to the public and any of you knitters and or crocheters who are out there and are not using it please take a look at it because you will enjoy it it's very cool it has thousands of free patterns and it is free to join and it is really fun to see what other people are working on it's a great way to learn from other people also if you find a pattern that you like you can people will review the projects and um, give you um, ideas about what might be wrong with the pattern or um, what is right about the pattern so go ahead and use that resource also on alpaca direct we do have a lot of free patterns as well and we also have re uh, reviews on our website so you can take a look at those as well so now the next one is shrinking your projects by washing them in the wash machine i have only done that one time since i have learned how to knit and it was one of my slippers and i was kind of bummed and then i thought you know what god gave me the skill to be able to create that slipper the first time i can certainly create it again especially since guess what i wrote my notes on ravelry so I just go back to Ravelry and knit myself another pair of slippers. It's no problem at all. I would also keep in mind for those loved ones who you are knitting projects for who are unable to care for their projects or the items that you've knit for them properly, go ahead and use super wash yarn. Don't use that really expensive non-washable yarn because it will just go to waste. They won't know how nice it really is they don't understand about the fibers and all that and so you want to go ahead and use a yarn that's washable and maybe not you know the top of the line for them and if you have those people out there who do not wear their projects and you do not they they don't seem like they appreciate it don't knit for them knit for charity knit for um, newborn baby infants knit for our soldiers I mean there's totally tons of people out there with, that would love to have knitwear uh, homeless I mean you could go on and on the list is endless just google it in your area and you'll find some uh, people that you can do charity work for and they would love to have your skills. So you can share your skills with people who appreciate it. Also, I wanted to mention today that we did get a new stock of this lovely concentric in. And if you were interested in doing that tra transient shawl by Michelle Hunter, and um, we have more color, a couple new colorways. This one's on either side are new colorways. So I thought I would share that with you. They want to know what cool. kind of yarn it is. This is called Concentric, and it's a gradient yarn, and it's by Haiku, which is also by Scassell, which is 100% baby alpaca. And it's kind of different strands held together, and it is a real joy to knit with. It's just a kick in the pants. It's wonderful. So that is a great... Uh, project there's it's called transient it's a beautiful shawl that michelle hunter did a knit along with us and taught us all kinds of new skills and she has it out there now and it, it i think it's still a paid for pattern you might be able to find it on one or two sites for free still but i'm not sure about that you'd have to check into that so the next thing that we're going to be talking about is oh plain yarn chicken rarely works out well 
Oh my goodness. Okay, so I play yarn chicken frequently. And I was wondering, do any of you out there play yarn chicken? Um, if you do, post comments in the comment section and, and let us know about the experiences that you've had. And sometimes it works out great, but lots of times it doesn't work out so great. You may have 600 stitches that you're binding off and you run out of yarn before you get to the end, so you have to go all the way back. Oh my gosh. And that is an exercise in frustration. So make sure you buy enough yarn and try not to play yarn chicken if you can help it because it's not fun when it doesn't end out well um so um oh i was also thinking i thought of one more thing if you do have scraps left over there are patterns on ravelry there's cut like scrap tastic cowls and socks and different things that are made out of all those bits of leftover yarns that you have so if you have enough leftovers take a look at those on ravelry just type in scrap tastic and you'll come up with some patterns that uses bits and ends of your lovely yarns that you don't want to throw out because they're too nice. So give those a look and see what you can find there. And casting on with reading out, reading through the whole pattern. Okay, so when we get a pattern, originally <clears throat> I had a very advanced knitter tell me one time when I was first learning. She said, don't worry about what the pattern says ahead because you just need to look at the pattern right at the beginning and just follow it from the start. And I quickly learned that was probably a bad idea because somewhere else in the pattern, it may tell you to use a supplies that you don't have, for instance, like a different needle, different size needle or something, and you don't have it. Or maybe you're in the airplane and the next section is gonna teach you a new stitch and you don't quite understand the instructions and you need to YouTube it so you can watch someone visually do the stitch, right? Well, you can't watch it when you're on the airplane. So if you read through it first and you learn about all these special stitches and all the little things in there that you do have to know, then you won't be caught by surprise when you're trying to get a project done and you're on a 12 hour flight or something like that, for instance. So I would say go ahead and read through the whole pattern and I would go, I would go so far as to say if you're interested in the pattern, you read, you take that pattern, look on Ravelry, look it up, see what other people have done with it, see what it looks like on them. Say, does it look good on them? Do I have the same body style? Is it going to look good on me? Um, you don't want to spend a ton of time doing knitting just to find out that it doesn't look great on you. And it doesn't look great on them either, but you didn't notice it until later when you went back and looked at it because you looked at yours and went, ah, mine's not as nice as I thought. So go ahead and look at all those things and research stuff as much as you can before you um, actually jump in with both feet and start doing the project. That way you won't have some hidden surprises that you do not enjoy. <laughs> you don't want that to happen ever if you can help it. Okay, so also another thing is make sure you read the pattern and if it doesn't make sense, look for errors and they are most Ravelry posters, if there is an error, they're the first ones to tell you. I mean, they will, they'll tell you straight up and they'll tell you how they fix it. So we can learn from each other even on Ravelry with uh, comments that are posted and even on our website with comments that are posted. If there are any problems or anything that they did differently or something that they did that made their project fabulous, you wanna learn from them because then you can do it too. You know, no sense in recreating the will. So, um, let's see what's going on here. Oh, spending too much time browsing on Ravelry instead of actually working on your knitting. How many of us out there have actually done that? I mean, we just get so sucked into Ravelry and looking at all the different patterns and we're like, my, my, two hours has gone by. And I am totally guilty of that. I do that a lot because I'm always trying to see what other people are working on or what might be popular at this very moment. And so I have to look at those top 20. And I also get sucked into the thing is, you know how when they first post a pattern, it's usually free. Oh, oh I'm always looking for the free patterns. I don't know. I think it's kind of a waste of time. I spend more time looking for free patterns than I would have, it would have been better just to go ahead and pay for a pattern. 
<laughs> but oh well, that's okay. I do that sometimes. But what I do instead of doing that, what I try to do, what my ideal thing to do would be to go ahead and get up early in the morning, turn my heels on my socks, for instance, and then go ahead and give myself a half an hour as a reward on Ravelry to look at patterns and maybe put on a timer on my cell phone so it actually tells me when my half an hour is up so that I don't spend too much time on Ravelry. So that's maybe something that you can do. Um, and the last thing that I thought about was avoiding finishing finish work. And what oh so there the project sits it's in your drawer because it just needs those ends woven in and i can challenge all of you out there i want to challenge you to think of it differently and this is kind of the way i think of it and once i finish a project i don't it doesn't sit i go ahead and weave in those ends and get it done because i challenge myself I ask myself, how can I weave in the ends and make them completely invisible? So I'm kind of anxious to go ahead and start weaving in ends and see if I can't make it so they can't find any spots. I mean, if I look at my ends that I wove in, what I'm always trying to do on the edges of my hat, for instance, okay, here's the edge of my hat, okay? Jim, scan all the way around it as closely as you can. You guys tell me if you can see where I wove in my end on the beginning of the round of this hat. Because I'm sitting here right in person with the hat in, right in front of me. I can't see it. I've gotten pretty good at weaving in those ends. So what I challenge all of you out there to do is to encourage yourselves to try and find see if you can improve your skills so well that you can weave in your ends and have nothing visible and have nothing ever come out and then they're like where are your ends well i mean dear lord if you ever have to take it apart you're going to be in a big world of hurt <laughs> Hopefully that never happens, but if it does, you will be in a world of hurt because you won't be able to find the ends yourself. But it's pretty cool, and it's a pretty neat thing. So, <clears throat> yes, go ahead and post your photos. Let us know what you're working on, and we're going to be entering to win a skein of this wonderful Sueno. So this is the prize for today, Sueno. Okay. So you post comments in the comment section. You tell us what you're working on. You tell us maybe where you're from or you know whatever you would like to talk about. And then you're entered for a chance to win. And every week we have something that we're um, posting. And this week is for a, a skein of Sueno. They want to know what Sueno is. What is it? The um, Sueno is a merino bamboo blend. Can you hold it up? This is... A DK weight yarn. It is 255 yards and it's 80% merino superwash and 20% viscous from bamboo. So it's bamboo and superwash, an 80 20 blend. And it's top of the line yarn. And when it's blocked, I think I turned that inside out. I did. It actually looked good on both sides. Um, but this is what it looks like when it's washed. It's a beautiful yarn. It has this really nice twist on it. And I actually want to make these boot socks out of this using the cable pattern. Because see how well this cable pattern showed up here? I think it would look beautiful in that in that same uh, cable pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and do that one again. Also, I wanted to show you there's this new pattern. It's called the Double Crescent Shawl by Jana Markova, and it's a new pattern that I'm testing, and it is going to be on alpacadirect.com. Yes, and it'll be a uh, pattern that we have there, but it's still being tested. And the thing about um, this pattern that's really cool is, you know how we do Judy's Magic Cast On to cast on for our socks, right? Here's your Judy's Magic Cast On right here. Well, she does Judy's Magic Cast On right here. And do you see how it's flat? She uses a series of yarn overs to create a double crescent shawl. So it's a half um, half moon on one side and a half moon on the other that it's creating. 
and it is really cool it's social knitting it's basically knitting with a few yarn overs but it's a great pattern and I'm really enjoying it and I'm sure that when it comes out you guys will enjoy it too so oh there was another thing I, that I wanted to talk to you about and I was gonna put these in my socks and I was turning my socks at 11 o'clock last night and forgot all about the darning thread. I wanted to put some of this darning thread in the heels of my socks because I it extends the life of your socks and it makes them much sturdier. So I was going to go ahead and use this uh, darning thread and I will do it on the next pair because I missed it on this pair. But the, this darning thread is fabulous. Um, we sell t loads of it, boat loads of it. And it's great for either darning socks or reinforcing your heels and toes in your socks. And so I was going to go ahead and try and use that. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Oh, um, this week's for, winner. Yes, yes, yes. Um, the winner for um, this week. It was from our last week's, um, was Carrie Bigger. And she, this was our last week's prize. And um, Carrie won, Bigger won this prize today. And the reason why I wanted to have you um, get these two colorways is I was thinking about Halloween. And I was thinking that maybe she could make a pumpkin or something. I don't know. But I thought it was pretty cool. And it's Lamb's Pride Bulky. And it's perfect for Halloween projects. And so I thought that Carrie Bigger would enjoy this. So Carrie, if you can give us your shipping um, information, we can send that out to you. And like I said, the prize for today is for a skein of Sueno. And then this next week, we are going to be talking about projects to knit for Halloween and what we learned from our knitting and crochet projects. And I have enjoyed talking to you today. And we have just talked about our 10 things that we should try to avoid or maybe think about differently so that we can improve our habits when we're knitting and crocheting and just make our life a little easier in general. And so, you know, using a few of those tips to help us out, we can knit along and be happier overall, which is wonderful. So any of you out there who have questions, you go ahead and post questions and or comments in the comment section and let us know what you're working on. You'll be entered to win a prize for this week. And we will be talking to you about next week about our Halloween projects that we are going to be knitting and or crocheting and what we learned from them. So you guys have a great week and we will talk to you at 9.30 next Tuesday.